Welcome back and let's look what's on business. The government is backing on transport infrastructure product projects to speed up economic growth by creating jobs and improving the business environment. On this week edition of, Transmo of Transformers, we focus our attention on the state of affairs in the country's multi-billion shillings infrastructure projects with the first installment being on the loot sector. has been fast moving to address the huge infrastructure deficit the country continues to face. It is estimated that the country has a shortfall of 4 billion US dollars translating to about 40 billion shillings each financial year. Businesses have had to contend with the dilapidated infrastructure as well as huge traffic snarl-ups. Construction layers in urban centers is the most difficult uh, work, uh, mainly when it comes to road construction. This has made Kenyan competitive on the global stage as exports are priced past the market rate. The cost of doing business, according to the World Bank, is a major determinant in attracting investors into an economy, something the International Monetary Fund agrees with. We are doing quite major projects. We have Southern Pipers, which we'll be able to do. Uh, we are planning to complete what we call Western Pipers uh, on the other end, and then there is Eastern Pipers. I think the key issue is the expansion for traffic. Mm -hmm. Among some of the projects the Ministry of Transport is betting big on include the Missing Links project as well as the 10,000 kilometers road energy program. The question of funding the mega projects has been a major headache for the national government as budgetary allocation has consistently fallen below targets. Building a road is not a big deal, but this road is going to be that for the next 15 years. And you see, government has, and I mean, doesn't have enough money to do all these kind of maintenance. In the budget estimates, the Department for Infrastructure has outlined plans to construct 350 kilometers of new roads through the usual budgetary allocation and 3,000 kilometers under the energy program. We are trying our very best in terms of increasing its infrastructure. And infrastructure is the most expensive component if you have to in terms of investment. Apart from the funds allocated to rehabilitate 234 kilometers of roads, 53.5 billion shillings was set aside to finance 3,000 kilometers of ongoing projects. And some of the innovative funding options the government has been toying around with include public-private partnerships and the most recent tolling stations. The plan to construct toll stations on some of the major highways has not gone down well forcing the Ministry of Transport to temporarily suspend its plans. It's not something which I'm going to sneak in, but it's something again in the long run to be implemented. Transport infrastructure was listed second in the six areas identified as critical in the budget strategies under the five-pillar transformation program. The standard gauge railway was singled out as vital in cutting transport costs by about 70% facilitating faster and cheaper movement of freight and passengers and enhancing competitiveness of the economy. By 2017, Kenya is expecting to have 8,000 kilometers of ongoing projects ready. This is set to spark off a major turnaround for the economy, which has been projected to grow between 5.5 to 6% of GDP by 2016. Abiyagina, KTN Business Today. Kenya Power has announced a 1.14 billion shilling loss in its half-year results to December 2015. Despite its, despite its lies in custom by 1.1 million, this and more with KTN's Ashley Mazuri. Kenjan today announced a 15% increase in its pre-tax profit of 5.6 billion shillings in its interim results and at December 2015 compared to 4.9 billion shillings the same period last year. The company's growth was driven by increased electricity revenue of 14.7 billion shillings from 11.6 billion shillings in 2014. 
On a less exciting note, though East African Portland Cement issued a profit warning claiming it foresees lower income for the year ending June 2016, driven by non occurrence of unrealized fair value gain on investment property and the gain on disposal of land. This even as the firm announced a 16% increase in its sales volumes in the six months ending December 2015. Kenya Power announced a 16.6% drop in its profit before tax for the half year ended December 2015 to stand at 5.73 billion shillings from 6.87 billion shillings the same period in 2014. Despite the number of customers increasing to 4.1 million from 3 million, the utility's net profit stood at 3.7 billion shillings in the six months compared to 4.5 billion shillings the year before. And finally, on a rather positive note, Chase Bank announced a 29% increase in its net profit for quarterly finance results as at September 2015 to 2.2 million shillings from 1.7 million recorded the same period last year. Driven by a 62.2% in its total assets to 151.8 million shillings from 93.5 million shillings, the bank's total operating income grew to 8.1 million shillings from 6.7 million shillings, representing a 21.4% increase. Ashley Missouri, KTN Business.